So I want to talk about my try to uh, tune some internal routines. Like, uh, yeah, I'm a kernel developer at Google, and recently I did uh, the extension for SVP, VMT, and Zigbom. So I already spent way too much time on code patching. And so what I want to try is to optimize functions like string compare, string len, and the, the mem, mem functions. Because, uh, of course, they are normally uh, uh, supplied by C libraries, but the kernel has its own uh, implementations. And libstring C in the kernel provides the very generic implementations that are completely un unoptimized. And for risk five, risk five has uh, slightly optimized generic functions <laughs> for the mem, mem functions, but you still uh, reuses the generic uh, string functions. And these uh, generic string functions always take precedence when no other opt uh, more optimized variant is, uh, is available. So it's either either the uh, optimized or the architecture specific variant or the generic one, which comes into play a bit later. And so the risk five problem is essentially that risk five is not a, a, a finite set of instructions, but can we have extensions for old, uh, no, old extensions, we have planned new extensions, and there may be even more future extensions, which can all influence the ability to do these functions more more performant. Yeah, like string and memcopy, different mic architectures are probably even you know a bigger mm, multiplier yeah. than different <laughs> ISA extensions, mm. right? Um, so it's gonna be a lot. Yeah. yeah. And you can mix and match all these functions and on, on a core. Essentially you, you can't really know what any core will support in the future. And yeah. Exactly. And for example, uh, work in progress uh, stuff from I've seen in our repository uh, is like uh, so, uh, these, these functions using the uh, CPB extension for a lot of stuff. And again, fast underlying access. So essentially, uh, for a string compare, I have seen implementations for ZPB plus fast underlined, which is faster than only ZPB, which is faster than the generic kernel function. And yeah, uh, same for yeah. I, I think you're going to see even more, right? Because yeah, Sci Five has byte forwarding, you know, slowness, and yeah. yeah. So yeah. It's, it's just the, the ones I have seen <laughs> so far. <laughs> and uh, for example, also the the man set can uh, profit from uh, ZBO zero, and yeah, there is a, a, a big bunch of stuff you can maybe optimize in the future. So we we already talked about fast align access that it's not really, uh, yeah, that you don't really know, uh, that it's not, not part of the ISO string and we need another way to detect if it's present. And yeah, I guess, do you put it into uh, just a the CPU node or? Uh, right now we do nothing. This afternoon, I wrote a patch to put in the CPU node. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't sent it yet. <laughs> But yeah, hopefully we will. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, what 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 I didn't really uh, uh, so far understand if uh, is the M stricter line will will this bite me or? Yeah, um, because okay, so if you're going to do string routines, right? You got the code, you write the code, it's assembly, whatever. GCC is not going to mess with you. Mm -hmm. But all the other stuff that gets like your inline string routines, all that sort of stuff, with strict align. GCC is very heavyweight about like I, I have to know it's aligned mm. or I emit, you know, byte instructions or whatever. And that causes lots of stuff that should be in line to not get in line, right? And the mem copy call is always expensive. And it causes stuff that is getting in line to either be very big or very slow or whatever. Right? Mm. I don't know what to do about that. I think this all extant architectures is not true anymore. Because of mm -hmm. the yeah. um, what's it called uh, the the D one, one could argue that D one being by far the most common chip <laughs> <laughs> should probably be what the default is. Mm. Right? I, you know, so yeah, I, I, you know, some sort of K config thing seems to make sense. My only worry is that 
we've had a lot of bugs with the M mode and you know misaligned access handler, particularly early on, you know, not actually properly emulating misaligned accesses, and therefore it's not 100% a performance problem. Also, it breaks people, mm. so yeah. it, it's kind of the, the worst option. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Also, like uh, a key config option always uh, like uh, you always have to decide one or the other. So there is no really unified. Well, in this case, I don't think you can really do anything yeah. else, just because this is like yeah. for the long tail. For you know, for the for the string routines, you can, you know, do some sort of iFunk flavored patching thing, or you can you know patch different inline calls or whatever. Right? But you know, for just the the you know the sea of byte loads that you get out of M strict align, I don't really know what you do. Yeah. Right. Anyway. <laughs> And yeah, there we have it. Uh, like uh, in, in GLBC, there's this functionality that's called iFunk, where you have a resolver that runs at the application startup and se essentially can select the most performant implementation you want to use in the application. And I guess we need something in the. Yeah, something. I mean, iFunk is very user space, you know, yeah, so yeah, we yeah, might be able to get away with something. Yeah, it's. it's yeah. It, just a, a similar, some some sort of yeah, similar concept. Yeah, the same sort of, you know, give me the function pointer or, or yeah. whatever. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, so so um, we are working on unified discovery. Uh, initially, it's just going to do existence, but then it will have parameters. And, and, you know, unaligned access, if you read the spec, it has three options, right? And so um, once that's in place, then you can decide either on kernel boot up or, you know, launching whatever, you, you at least will have access to that information in a regular uh, format. Um, today, it's up to everybody to decide for themselves how they learn about what's there. So Yeah, I mean, we can put it in the DT and find it pretty easily. That, you know, that's a manageable thing to do. It's DT yeah. only, but yeah. whatever. Um, uh, I think the bigger issue is uh, all the, like, you know, the, the, the kind of all the byte loads you get that are inline and whatnot. You're, we're not going to jit the entire kernel or something, so there's kind of no way, there's no way around this. Yeah, and uh, essentially to to select between the different uh, implementations, of course one could think about static uh, branches and static keys, but that's of course not really doable because for one you create this whole bunch of things, and also static keys the documentation already says that it's used for seldom used features. And so you penalize always one. Yeah, I think for this time, for the string routines, because they're only function, like only function entries that we're replacing, we can do a more iFunk flavored thing. Mm. Ideally without the, you know, got indirect, yeah. <laughs> right? But, you know, some sort of inline flavored thing. Uh, yeah, one. cool, all right. So my, my uh, the, uh, the, the thing I thought about doing, that's the next question. Yeah. Uh, so I just uh, I've got a slight concern here that you're selecting on the static information you've got, and yet how are you picking up the impact of microarchitecture? Because if you are, I mean, if you've got multiple execution, if you've got instruction fusion, it doesn't really matter what your instructions are. That's going to dominate on your performance. That's why you have microarchitecture models inside the compilers. So uh, yeah, I'm wondering so I think, whether you're very sort of, you almost want a dynamic discovery of what actually is fast on your machine. Because if you try and statically predict it, I think increasingly with architecture, it's not going to give you the right answer. There, and there are other routines in the kernel, like the crypto stuff, that will try a bunch, yeah. see what's fast, right? Um, it's an option. I, I, I hope it doesn't get that bad, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I should just qualify this. I'm not an operating system guy, so if I'm yeah. talking hogwash, say. I, I think, in my worry, the bigger issue, though, is, you know, for the functions that we can replace, I think we can kind of deal with that. You know, we'll have various flavors. You know, we can select based on the ISA, right? We can try to look around and vendor specific stuff, kind of an ad hoc thing. I'm, I'm more worried about, you know, what we're going to do with all the compiled code, you know, how, what, what is the generic tuning and whatnot. So maybe that's more of a GCC problem. So. Yeah. So anyway. the, the idea I, I had was just using alternatives again. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. And just uh, 
once determined which one is to use, then just uh, replace them and have like string compare itself being an inline function that then just calls the relevant one and we replace the one uh, with the and yeah. output. Yeah, yeah. Does this actually work? So won't this not link right? Is that not true? Uh, this, this works when you link it. I'm, with all I'm the not sure that, that the okay. idea I had this, this idea on Monday. Oh, okay. So you haven't actually written the code <laughs> I'm yet. I'm preparing the slides. You haven't actually written the code for this? Not yet, no. Okay, yeah, because I think this won't work because you know, PC relative call relocations will be bad when these things move around. But anyway, we'll see what happens. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's more, more like I, I'm trying to see if I'm going in the right direction. Yeah, and I think this is the right direction. I think yeah. that exact code sequence won't work, yeah. if that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's more, more like an idea. And, yeah. And of course, the uh, the uh, thing that then may be, may provide a, a problem that there is no real sorting. Like you have uh, one that's like a string compare ZBB. Does also the the one has its own bit minute routines. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the term you're getting at. With just there's going to be a lot of these. Mm. Trying to look through what flavor of machine you're on and figure it out. It's just, it's going to be an unmanageable mess at some point. So, I, yeah. I think it's worth saying is you are focusing on the right, we've done comparisons with, between trying to make risk architecture, risk five architectures go as fast as M1. And the, the mem copy and the string copy are absolutely central to that across all the software yeah. because they come into everything. Every time you move a struct, that, fundamentally that, it's, a, it's a mem copy underneath. That's why there's so many comments because it's like it needs to get fixed. <laughs> it's real yeah. bad. <laughs> doesn't this also do kernel wide though, and it doesn't address the if the differences that are per per heart? Yeah. So the misaligned access thing I added was a per heart DT string, but yeah, how do you handle per heart string routines? Okay. Like, see, either either you whack in a per CPU relative jump in there, which is going to be super expensive yeah. when you're calling it memgabi, right? Or uh, you just kind of try to figure out which one's best across the board. Yeah. Hope, hope, hopefully people don't build hardware that ha requires wildly different string routines between one core <laughs> and the other. And if they do, it's probably not going to go so fast. So I don't know, man. <laughs> yeah, I guess I just uh, determining the, the the most common function <laughs> should probably work. Yeah, I, I think the hope is that with a like like focusing on the ISA extensions that are very relevant for these things, right? We can get most of the cases dealt with, yeah. and hopefully that's kind of good enough, and we get it done early enough that folks design their hardware to run their teams well and whatnot, and it and it doesn't turn into chaos. I'm not designed. We'll see. Yeah, I'm not designing too crazy stuff. Yeah, I, I think like basing an idea around hardware vendors not building something crazy is never, <laughs> never a way to live your life. <laughs> oh, online. Yeah, if you want to take this. Yeah, uh, just missed the point about the per hat. So these will be selected per hat, like it will be detected per hat at runtime. Well, but the the CPU performance properties are per heart. Like if you have asymmetric multiprocessing machines, yep. right, you might have very different performance properties between big and little. Yes, but that's then right. functions are not per heart unless your exactly. static inline routine does a per CPU lookup, which is probably going to kill your performance on something like memcopy. So I don't know of a good way to fix that. Okay. Yeah. That's what uh, I was aside like... from the hope that hardware vendors don't build things that need that, <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah, with heterogeneous systems, it will go crazier. Uh, another question was like, uh, with the alternative like code patching, <clears throat> let be. Uh, yeah. So the no, I have not asked the question. <laughs> so I'm um, uh, the alternative gets selected based on currently it's all the vendor ID and uh, basically vendor specific things, but then eventually it will be based on the IS extensions or uh, some ISA properties. Are discovered from DT slash ACPA. Yeah, he's saying currently all our all our alternatives are basically for errata, so they yeah. look at the vendor string. This would require uh, also looking at other stuff. But no, the SVB VNT and Zinc form. Uh, right. That yeah. So there is a string, vendor yeah. string, but uh, the, yes. uh, it, it's essentially the same mechanism, but lives in the CPU features. Uh, C. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So now we do have some that are ISA string based. So I oh, forgot yeah. about that. So yeah, it's so, the same uh, thing. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's yeah, you did the, uh, that for for false. I forgot. Sorry. 
Yeah. Yeah, and the misaligned access thing I had added a CPU feature probe to do that. Just didn't do anything with it. So anyway. Yeah, okay. Uh, so voila. Uh, essentially, yeah, and that's tenor to free. Because you essentially replace replace one with the other. So it doesn't get slower for anybody. And yeah, what 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 may be in it. it yeah, of course, we need and some sort of selection mechanism that I'm, I can't really fathom yet, <laughs> where you uh, have every everything in some sort of list, and then because like with uh, current alternatives, you can come into the uh, issue that you have one alternative applying and the other also being valid, and then the def behavior is not really defined. Also. Yeah, I, I think it's one of those things where like if we try to solve every possible problem, we're going to go crazy. So let's just kind of, for the machines that we have, right, and the routines we know we need to make go fast in those machines, let's sort that out. And then as more stuff shows up, we'll figure it out. You know? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about, for example, ZPP and the D1 Z, uh, essentially equivalent. Yeah, <laughs> which is, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so. okay, no, okay that, that's, that's not really valid because the D1, of course, but it doesn't have ZPP. So. Uh, Christopher, then. What about um, making this available for, for vendor extensions? So when I'm a vendor, I have my own extension, which, for example, has load pair, which is simply optimized in my architecture. I want to use it in this use case, and I want to override whatever mechanism is provided in the kernel. Yeah, I mean, at that point, there's really no difference, right? It's just it's just another thing to select on, if, if that makes sense. The, it, it's one of the things that will make the list very big. Right? Yes. But yeah, it's really just going to depend on what those extensions look like and whether or not it's worth selecting on the extension or just saying like, hey, we're on this mic architecture. There it is. Don't worry about the collection of extensions that are on it because we already wrote the code for this specific thing. So okay. I, I, it's just, that, but that's one of those things where like if we try to solve every problem, we're just going to kind of go crazy with hypotheticals. So yeah, yeah. We, we, we have a small number of things. Let's <laughs> fix those. Yeah, yeah, Mark's, Mark, uh, Mark yeah. has another question. Um, I, you know, I've done appliances before in the past, and like this is just not an issue because you handwrite all the stuff, right? Because you're not going to go ahead and use off-the-shelf things if you know your your particular application is performance sensitive. So, presumably, this is you know somebody's downloading generic kernel and wanting to load it on an arbitrary system, right? Yeah, so like as it stands, you can do build time configuration of most of these alternative based schemes and you know turn off the ones that you don't want. So if you're building a system that you know, you don't have to turn on all the other stuff that may hurt you in some way. It's not perfect because no one's really building that stuff yet, but you know, it it'll get there as folks find and fix the problems. But yeah, this is only for the you know, def config that you might find in like a generic distro that just needs to run on everything and then you have to live with it. So yeah, right. So uh, yeah, essentially. Um, uh, so the question I still need to solve is like the detecting underlying access, but that's a moot point now. <laughs> and uh, I had the unified discovery as one possible option. What I'm still not sure about, uh, can I use the generic functions in some way? Like, uh, get, get I shouted at if I modify libstring C to somehow <laughs> make them available to me. Yeah, and that's what I was worried about last time I looked at this, and I thought, I mean, I'll just put it in Arch or Scribe. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know, there's only one way to find yeah, out. <laughs> like, uh, but duplicating uh, the very generic uh, string compare. I know, yeah, it seems really silly, but yeah. yeah. But then I, I think <laughs> I get shouted at if I, uh, yeah, so I, I don't know. You you can try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then of course the uh, how to do the selection. So it's a lot, a lot of me not seeing the wood for the trees, and I just came up with the, the the idea to use the alternatives again on Monday. So I think that makes sense. Aside from that, I think the linker won't like it. So <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Yeah. yeah. There's Mark again. Uh, the other thing is, I mean, you, you've listed the issues with ISA extensions, but 
probably the dominant thing when you're talking about these memory operations is, is actually going to be the cache config, and that's going to be way different from implementation to implementation, right? You know, how much you unroll, how, you know, prefetch, blah, 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 all those things, right? So, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure that this is actually going to be dominant in the end. How's that? The, um, but Mark, isn't that the same? That's the same issue I was making. It's the microarchitecture that is the is the fact you've got to take on increasingly these days. I, I think that's that. Cache size can be part of that. Right. And I, my only point, uh, Jeremy, at all was that the uh, there's microarchitecture issues with respect to which extensions you support and how you support them, and there's microarchitecture issues with things that they you know, you have to specify yourself um, regardless, right? Yeah, and particularly the memcopy stuff, it's not the, like, a lot of times you're not worried about the stuff that is in ISA, you're worried about everything else. And that's why we're worried about this gigantic explosion, like Jerry mentioned with the, you know, pipeline models and the, uh, it's, it's kind of the same problem. I don't know how to fix that. So I guess right now it's a lot of low hanging fruit because like, just using ZPB or anything is will be faster than. And, and I think that's the key here is like what we have now is very bad. So let's let's just fix the easy problems and see how it, see how it looks. Maybe it's okay, and maybe we don't have to have a million different microarchitecture yeah. specific string routines because people kind of coalesce around. Yeah, I guess at some point uh, the next variant also will have to somehow prove a bit that it's really faster. That's it. That it's worth it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. But I think it will just be a pile of optimizations that keeps growing, and yeah, I don't think there's a way around that. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, okay. what exactly do you mean by uh, selection with table for implementation sorted by performance? Do that offline and then update yeah, the table. Or? One of the ideas to somehow uh, keep uh, track of the uh, available options, but I'm not yet sure. Uh, but like, how, how do you keep all the options uh, together? Because right now you have, for example, SVBBMT lives in CPU features and the T-head errors live in errata T-head. And how do you keep track of which are available? That's yeah, because I mean, like, we, we have here, oh, sorry, Tish, you go. No, no, I was just saying uh, which routine we choose, like, just for the like to start with, can we just rely on the K config and then we can play around with the K config based uh, selections? And then once we have more sophisticated. Yes, if we just do it in K config. I think some of this is going to need to be dynamic because we don't have the old, sorry, we don't have the new instructions on the old implementations, right? So, like CBOZ, you really want for Memset sometimes. <laughs> the kind no, of no, way. No, I, I mean, uh, the detection happens dynamic, like from the DT string or whatever, but let's say we have two options, let's say A or B, then how do you, which one do you choose, uh, choose A or B option, which depending on A is faster or B is faster on whatever hardware, right? That's what you meant by table with implementation sorted by performance. Yeah. That's what I understood. Like the uh, GDPC has this resolver and yeah. like, for example I had, it was like, First this, then this, then this. But uh, I guess I guess that that's my urge to somehow replicate. Yeah, I, I think it makes sense. And the crypto folks have this like Intel crypto stuff will benchmark at runtime still, right? Do, do you know? Do they do that. Yeah. They benchmark at yeah. runtime. They use it. Okay. Yeah. 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 So they just have the collection of things. They just try a bunch, pick the fastest one, and for things that are self-contained, like string routines where you know they're not going to just touch memory all over the place you can run them and you can benchmark them you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's a whole other can of worms <laughs> 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 yeah, but that's something we have to talk about as the performance numbers come through on the patches <laughs> <laughs> yeah early on at some point yeah right, i mean boot slow down of, booting yeah. <laughs> that is slowed on booting. Yeah, I don't think they do it like in line with the rest of boot. Um, you know, it's part of the crypto, anyway, the initialization stuff. Yeah. But that's pretty fine grain for, yeah, uh, yeah, trying to talk about it. Okay. More questions? 
Do we mark? So for the bit, um, the ZB, you can just use QMU right now. Is that the only option, or I mean, because there's no hardware, right, with the bit uh, manip, or uh, from what I've seen, only in QMU. But like as I said, the D1 has an equivalent. Oh, it does. Okay, all right. It also has some bit manipulation. So oh, okay. Sorry. All the pulse kits have it as well. Yeah, yeah, they don't have it. <laughs> yeah, they have it. ETH pulp, it has a, a, a predecessor of Bitmanip, so you can see Bitmanip happening there. Yeah, so another window implementation. <laughs> so when you said a D1 has an equivalent, it's an errata also? Oh. In the specific. First of that vendor specific, like they, they have an oh, it's a similar vendor specific thing. Nothing related to the standard respect. I mean that side. So <laughs> <laughs> not me. <laughs> then it's a router. Then it's a router. So. It's an X extension. The what? Custom extension. Yeah. No, that's not at all. The Wisp 5 is built on custom extensions. We encourage it. <laughs> that one is actually in the custom extension also. So it's a real custom extension. Yeah, I mean, I, we are not going to finish that in two minutes. So. <laughs> <laughs>